Well, if it be the summer of aught nine, clearly it can't be long before election time comes along in aught ten. And sure enough, who's with us but one of those candidates that's going to be running for the, uh, the Democratic gubernatorial nod, none other than the former Speaker of the House, Jim Eamon. And this is a lot... Interesting sound effects you've got here, Jim. Yes, we actually uh, have a large base of uh, Asian support from Chinese and Korean community. And uh, we thought this would be an interesting thing to have at a Democratic uh, uh, function. I've never in my 27 years had uh, some sort of Asian music, but they're going to be performing for us later, Dave, so it uh, should be very interesting. It's, you know, about a year ago, you basically threw your hat tentatively yeah. into the ring. It's been working for about a year or thereabouts. You stood down as speaker, and yes. how's it feeling? You know, I'm really having a great time, David. It's been fun going all over the state of Connecticut. We have such a beautiful state, and to be able to go into a lot of these towns and for the first time in my life and be able to meet the people and talk to them, and it's so amazing to me how though the, the borders that we have each town has a uniqueness about them and so do the people so you know Connecticut is very diversified and it's been a lot of fun for me we have uh, this is where we're gonna win David we're gonna win because of grassroots we have support like this all over the state and we're gonna surprise a lot of people David I know I've never run statewide before or my two opponents have um, but they're gonna they're gonna be in for a surprise well of course the the uh the battle goes on. You've got uh, Dan Malloy and you've got the Secretary of the State uh, already in there. And who knows who else is going to throw their hat in the ring. When, when does it really start getting hot and heavy? I think really gonna, right after the uh, November elections. November. There'll probably be a little bit of a pause uh, for the holidays. But then starts January of 2010, it's going to get uh, uh, pretty heated, I'm sure. Well, now, you stood down just before everything sort of collapsed, uh, both nationally and on a statewide basis, economically. So you've been able to watch from the sidelines uh, what's been going on. What's been your take on how it's been handled? Well, you know, first of all, uh, though someone would like to put the blame on Governor Rell, such that I'm running against her, uh, or even the General Assembly, in reality, we can't. Nobody can. Uh, this was something that they inherited from... Uh, failed policies uh, from the Bush administration, certainly uh, five failed uh, financial institutions, real estate market. Uh, Connecticut, for the most part, believe it or not, compared to other states, actually isn't doing that bad as bad as the news is. Um, but they still have the responsibility uh, to get out of this. And I really believe they're missing one important thing. If, you know, being a former speaker and being an armchair speaker, it's easy to criticize, and I'm not going to do that. Uh, but if someone was to ask, or if, if the phone rang, uh, I just want to know where's the debate been about jobs? The only true stimulus package that we, can, we have in Connecticut and around our nation is to create new opportunities, new jobs. And I think this is the time to do it. In a bad economy, you can be more bold and you can try to experiment with new things. And I think that's what's been lacking up in the General Assembly and certainly from the governor. Uh, she shouldn't be out there doing... Uh, uh, press conferences uh, and fluff pieces uh, when we're in such a bad economy. Economy. She should be basically closing the doors and uh, locking the doors, I should say, and closing the windows and making sure with, the, that the with leadership's With all the finger pointing that's up. been going on, uh, very little has been fully accomplished in, in getting this next biennial uh, budget together. Uh, latest suggestion by some of your colleagues is to close down the motor vehicle department. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
we need clearly more than just that yeah. to solve the problem. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I really believe uh, when they have to talk about the issues of transportation, I mean, we've been talking about it for three years now, and uh, President Obama and many of the experts say infrastructure is where we can create some opportunities and jobs. I don't understand why that's not happening. We have $3.6 billion we've already passed in the budget uh, years before. That money should be implemented, and we should start those things going. Um, there's other things we can do, too. Certainly, uh, I've tried to throw out some ideas of where we can have some some real substantial cost savings. One is uh, reversing from um, nursing home care to home care. It's been proven all over the nation that by uh, allowing people the choice of actually getting care at home, it's better for the patient, better for the family, and by the way, great for the taxpayers. We try to put implement the bill earlier this year it's about six hundred million dollars savings to the to the state. That's pretty substantial. Why we why we haven't had that debate? Why it's not even part of an agenda? I don't understand. Budget year. How much of a difference is there between uh, Daniel Malloy and uh, Susan Bicewitz and Jim Amon? Well, there's a big difference. You know, Susan uh, Bicewitz is a very good Secretary of State. She's had a couple years of legislative experience. Dan Malloy's had zero. Uh, the person uh, that you're talking to has 18 years experience up in Hartford, one third of my uh, time up there between majority leader and speaker. Uh, I was in leadership. I did six budgets, I had four balanced budgets, four surpluses, a $1.4 billion rainy day fund. There's no doubt I know where all the nooks, all the nooks and crannies of the Capitol. I'm the most experienced candidate. I'm certainly the one uh, that should be uh, the next step to be the next governor of the state. Do you expect that uh, the governor will run again? I don't think so. I think, uh, in fact, one of the main reasons why I am running was because uh, Dick Blumenthal wasn't going to run. I called, and uh, that Jody Rell doesn't run. Uh, I'm 50 percent right. Uh, I'm handicapping it, Dave. So we'll see what happens. And who are all these people that you're surrounded by? All the people over here, all over oh, this room. They come from all walks of life. We have. Uh, People that I've helped in Harford, the vendors, I have correction officers over here, a couple firefighters I see. We see a general, a lot of businessmen. I see a lot of people, small businessmen here today. And I believe that's where the small businessmen are going to support my campaign because I'm the one that has the agenda and the ideas to create jobs for the state of Connecticut. This is a fundraiser. Needless to say, you've got to get to what point to get matching funds from the state? Uh, the first uh, matching is 250000 By when? Uh, by May of next year, so we got lots of time. Um, I can only raise $100 maximum per person. Uh, so it's about a lot of bodies. It's not about the amounts of money, but a lot of people. And I think right now we're about 20% there of uh, qualifying uh, 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 qualifying con contributors. So that'll be a real grassroots effort. Real so. grassroots effort. Hey, listen, we want to wish you the best. It's always good to Thank see you. Dave. Never a dull moment. And, uh, Absolutely. Not so long ago, uh, Jim was able to get out and take a vacation in Hollywood West, not to be confused with his idea of Hollywood East that's been going on in the state of Connecticut. Congratulations. Great to see you and Terry and a fun evening here tonight. I have a wonderful background music. In our I, I, I don't think I'll join in the harmony work there, but uh, thank you. Former Speaker Jim Eamon, we're at Villa Bianca in Seymour. It is a great, interesting, exciting night here, and we've got more coming up for you. It's doingitlocal.com.